I am really happy to have Rachel Fotenhauer with us today for this conversation. Rachel holds an MA in counseling and is a licensed professional counselor, as well as a psychic, theta and body intuitive practitioner and a channel of earth. Working both remotely and in person in California, as well as also sometimes in Colorado and Hawaii, Rachel channels Earth's healing energy to assist her clients. She also offers online classes and retreats that mentor participants in connecting to Earth energy and consciousness. Her website is vastearth.com. That's vast hyphen earth. Dot com. Rachel, I'm really happy that you were able to make time to join us because the whole focus of this event is the human earth relationship and you are someone who ended up with this fairly unique and really beautiful ability to talk directly to our beloved planet. And so I think you and I have a number of things we want to talk about today, and one of our focuses is going to be to give people really actionable tools for connecting to Earth. But why don't you begin just very briefly by saying something about how you got into this work, and then we'll go from there. First, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about Earth and her consciousness to a wider audience. I think it's incredibly important right now for people to expand their mind about Earth, that she's not just a physical um, being that we walk on, but that she's a conscious being. So how I came about this was for years I've, I've been doing, I'm a counselor and a coach, and I've been do doing that work along with channeling and quite a number of years ago, while meditating, well, actually, first, I'll explain real briefly an experience I had right the day before Earth came to me was I had hurt my knee and I was in my bed um, icing it. And I started meditating and doing some energy work on my knee. And I went into this deep space, space where I heard my body basically say to me, jump time. And I just knew how to do it. And I'd never had an experience like that before. And it was very much like a near death experience in the way that, um, that I've known people who have gone through that process and, and where I ended up, which was in that complete state of connectedness to everything. And in that going into that complete state to, of connectedness, I passed through time and saw all these different planes that existed, just like we're a plane of existence. I saw for as far as the eye could see other planes of existence. So these multiple universes were pretty much lined up next to each other. And then I went into this complete state of connectedness and deep peace and was downloaded all this information, which I won't get, get into the minutia here, but a lot of it had to do with earth and why it's so important to connect to her and what a privilege it is to be here. And that was that we as souls come here to expand and learn. That's our main thing. And this is a really perfect place to do that because it is so dense, but along with that, it's literally dense, you know, and along with that literal density is this beauty of the lakes and the trees and the oceans um, and, you know, fellow beings. It's a beautiful place to be able to learn and grow and expand. And the way we do that is through relationships with each other and through experiencing the full spectrum of emotion. And so um, after a while, I just got, okay, it's time to go back in. And as I was coming back in, I saw this line of souls lined up again forever with real to come here, to be on earth. And it's a privilege and an honor, and there's an urgency to it. And also that those souls that are being born into this or reborn into this plane of existence are very strong, and they have to be for the times that we're in. 
because it's such a pivotal, it's at, we're at a nexus point, right? Um, so I came back into my body and I literally felt like the skin was getting zipped up over me and I had this profound appreciation, a whole nother level of appreciation that I always had it up in my brain, but you know, like somatically, I felt it like in every cell of my body. And this was able to align with what I knew about earth. This time I felt it in this whole deeper experiential level of this profound appreciation for being human on earth. And then the next day I was out meditating and channeling and I heard this new voice and I said, who's this? And she said, this is earth. And I have something important to say to you. I want you to be the one to, and along with others, because there's so many other people, but this is years ago. There's so many people getting this message now of the importance of her, of earth. And it's basically what she told me in a nutshell is that earth is a conscious, has consciousness. I mean, she is a conscious being just like us. She has thoughts and feelings just like us. She is energy just like us, like everything's energy. And that our energy affects her. It impacts her greatly. And that we need to be in symbiotic relationship with her. And we, I think as a human species, we have um, evolved out of that. I think at one point, Many times different cultures have connected to her and held great reverence to her. And I think many still do, and many people still do. Um, and the thing about connecting with Earth, too, is that we heal her when we connect to her. We're meant to be here. It's one of our main purposes of coming here. But it also helps us to embody our souls in a way that for those that are spiritual seekers, Earth's energy gives this expansion at this light speed. It's the expansion that happens is so fast and it helps us to completely embody. And so when we connect to her, there's an energetic grid that runs through earth that connects out into the universe that our fear and hate and other lower frequency emotions have destabilized. And this also contributes to her imbalance. And according to earth, in order for her to heal at a faster rate, we need to step outside of the box and look at that differently than what we have been. Now, certainly cleaning up pollution, reducing toxins, reducing our footprint is all incredibly important and matters. And it's, um, we, I mean, we have to step into that more seriously. Um, but what she says is that us connecting to her on an energetic level is more important. And the reason is, is that she needs at least one, seven million people to connect to her more consciously. And I'll talk about how to do that. It's very simple. And the way that works. So when a client would come in and I would work on them channeling Earth's energy to heal them, we, we don't just work on the body. So when I say we, it's earth and I, um, it's earth and my soul that does a lot of this healing. And other energies will sometimes come in to help assist too. But we don't just work on the physical body. We work on the energetic bodies and the soul. So we actually start with the soul and we clear the density which is stuck fear and trauma in the soul and the energetic bodies and then the physical body. And what happens is people can heal at an exponential rate because we're healing all of the person, 
not just the physical form. And right now with earth, with the way we're approaching earth and healing her is we're just healing her physical form, which is very important. I mean, saving the Amazon is critical. Cleaning up the oceans, especially the Pacific Ocean right now is critical. That matters, but it needs to be faster. <laughs> yeah. And there's a real urgency, she is saying, because we are on the precipice. And the way to do that is by just the way she heals us is to heal her that way. So if we get enough people send connecting into her consciously with intention, connecting to her, sending her our energy and walking around and knowing that we are connected and a part of her, then she's going to shift into balance much faster, much more dramatically. And her energetic grid heals. She needs to be in balance. Her energy needs to be in balance. And she says that will affect the um, climate, the weather patterns. I mean, there's certainly, I know, atmospheric patterns that affect Earth. You know, solar flares, all that stuff affects Earth. A meteor could come in and blast us. I mean, there's all that. But as a species here, we are having great impact on her well-being and other and other beings here. Dramatic impact, as you know. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, you, the worst thing is the nuclear, the nuclear fallout is the worst. I mean, that can have devastating. That literally hurts her. Um, I mean, I know we get radio radioactivity right from the sun every day, it's, but, but to have nuclear, like Fukushima, the waste happening there, that is, has an immense negative impact on her. So in a nutshell, that's how I came into earth. And I've been channeling and daily, uh, I channel creator's energy. I channel my, so our souls are immense, right? They, some souls can create planets. We are immense. So you want to channel, it's about really stepping outside of yourself. This is another, there's a couple of things I love about doing this work is when anyone can do it. Does it, it like I've had in a group, I've had people that are of the Jewish faith, Islamic, Fun, fundamental Christians, all in the same group, extreme, diff, you know, different beliefs, but they all believe in earth. And you can have your own faith and still her energy will support whatever, wherever you're at. And however you believe, however you go through life, her energy supports that. And it, She's asking you to expand, to really step into the light that you really are and use that to heal her and yourself is a side effect. You heal yourself as a side effect. There's so many benefits that come from connecting to earth. And I'll tell you, I'll tell everyone what they are. They are, and this is something like any, it's a practice by the way. Um, the more you do it, the more you benefit, just like any practice. But there's some real physical and mental, emotional benefits from this that are quite dramatic. So I have seen people in the space of a year get to the same spiritual expansion that I've seen people it takes 20 years to get to. And that is they get into a place of such deep peace and detachment within a year. I mean, really profound where their lives are changed. They're not reactionary to the world around them. They're not reactive, I mean, um, to the world around them. Um, they feel their intuition broadens, their peace, their love, they feel connected to everything. And that makes a big difference in one's life, a dramatic difference. And then there's all the physical benefits too. Um, it can help reduce and sometimes eliminate pain. Um, I've seen it heal. I've seen her energy heal lupus, Epstein-Barr, Lyme, 
chronic pain, chronic headaches. I've seen her increase the longevity of people with cancer, so they're living longer. Um, I mean, all sorts of things. It definitely helps with reducing dramatic re or eliminating, again, anxiety, depression. Um, amazing work with PTSD. As a clinical uh, mental health clinician, I've done years and years of work with trauma. And I've never seen anything like earth as an energy in healing trauma deep PTSD, even more so than EMDR at times. So um, really, we benefit from connecting. It's very mutual, it's symbiotic. Yes, that was all so beautiful, Rachel. I just want to echo some of your key points so that our listeners are really assimilating because everything you said was, was truly important. I loved how you spoke in so many ways to the fact that we are meant to be here on this planet. She's not just a blank canvas or a provider of resources for human lives. We're actually here in a deep spiritual physical partnership with her. And as you pointed out, some cultures have known that um, Western and industrialized cultures for the most part have forgotten it. And I truly believe we are at the beginning of reigniting that belief. Me too. You also pointed out that a foundation is needed for our environmental activism. And that is a foundation of our spiritual awareness and our relationship to this planet. I see so much of the 20th century environmental activism and even a lot of what's going on now is this sort of willy nilly, let's do this, let's do that. But it would be like, you know, if you're trying to have a close relationship with a partner or family member or friend, and you're kind of following a rule book, but there's no heart in it, or there's no sense of purpose, or, right. or there's no love, but it's a sort of robotic, well, maybe we should try this. So I really, that's one of the things I love about your work is that we need this wise, deep, spiritual, bodily connection to this planet in order to actually create regeneration here. You also pointed out when you were talking about having worked with clients of all different religious perspectives, our care about this planet and our care for this planet can be one of maybe the top two or three things that unites humanity. And that is amazing to think about. You know, we hear about disadvantages of globalized culture and I'm alert to those, but an advantage of globalized culture is we're all recognizing this is, we have this in common, this yeah. need to survive and thrive on a planet who is imperiled right now. And so jointly, we all need to connect and turn that around. Yes, we do. It's a universal need. Yeah. It's a universal need. It's, uh, and it's a universal capability to be able to connect to her. There's nothing impeding us from her and, and what you're saying too about these, I don't know, I wanna, I don't wanna discount and I'm not saying you are at all, any action that anyone does for earth, but you're right, a lot of people, they don't, there's no, the heart is it, like their intention is in the right place. Yeah. But it needs to be more action oriented on a personal level. Because what happens with this is people that end up connecting to earth, they get these benefits out of it. But one of the things is they literally connect into the elements more that they connect into, they have a, they find that their relationship to other beings, whether it's their own pets or you know, there's more care and compassion about the other beings that exist on this planet. And as a result of feeling Earth, because the thing is, is when you do this work, like we'll end with this meditation, right? Um, is you feel Earth. Like you, people, like the first time they feel Earth, tears come to their eyes and they're blown away 
they might hear her, they might see her, feel her, like they, they feel this higher power presence because she is a higher power. And it, it rocks the world. It, it freaking blows their mind is what it does, you know? And as a result of this symbiotic relationship is they start enhancing those other habits they've done and that other activist work takes on a whole new meaning. So they, I've seen people say they've never done a garden. Well, they do now. They never composted. Well, they do now. They didn't think about buying recyclable bags. They do now. They don't beat themselves up if they forget, you know, because they're doing the best they can. Earth isn't, um, like one of the things I get with people is they'll say they're afraid to connect to her because they think that they're like, she's already given us so much. Mm. I don't want to take anything more from her. Mm. And I have to re-educate them on, no, 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 you're giving, we're meant to be here. Like this, we're meant to be enmeshed with earth. We're meant to be in this relationship. So when you're going down and giving her that energy, you are healing her just as much as she's healing you. But the thing is, is that like, they're feeling all this benefit, but they don't see the benefit. That's the thing. It feels very one way, but it's not. Earth is, I mean, she feels alone. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll, it's like they start recognizing that. I mean, I've had, I had one woman recently that say, I am in full conversation and full dialogue now with her. Like she's hearing her, and this is a woman who, you know, didn't really do anything intuitive you know I taught her how to intuitively connect and then she's now at this place where she fully has a conversation with earth uh, every day and earth enjoys that conversation with her it feels seen just like we all want to feel seen earth wants to be seen too and you know it's kind of like as a child we take our mothers for granted, right? I mean, moms give, parents give. They give and give and give, and the child, you know, gives back with its love. And a child will just assume mom's going to be there or dad, get, you know, all the time. And then through the maturation process, they have this level of recognition and appreciation. But we've been like little children on earth just expecting continual resource from her and not really paying attention to her as a mother and really as a being of what this is, what she's like, show her some appreciation. Yes. And so I, I really like that analogy. I think it's very, very important because a lot of what we're talking about is about humanity's maturation into adulthood. I really do believe that. And I'm trying to remember, um, yeah, it's David Plotkin who has written a lot about this. So if anyone listening really wants to follow up in this angle of humanity's maturation into becoming once again, beings that consciously care for earth, Plotkin, had, Bill Plotkin, excuse me, not David, Bill Plotkin has written a lot about that. but you know, we need to think of it in this way that, you know, in adulthood, you do learn to have a more reciprocal relationship with your parents. And that's what earth needs of us at this time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the ways I'd like to give people some very actionable steps that yes. they see that are very easy, fast, um, because earth also knows that we're busy. And she would love it for us to simplify our lives. And we all would love to simplify our lives. You know, no one's, most people aren't begging for more on their plate these days. Um, but she, the way you could connect to earth is uh, on my website at vast-earth.com is a two meditations that are free to download and we'll do it one here. One of them is called the COVID-19 meditation, but it's actually a very beautiful meditation to do anytime. And the other one's called connecting to earth. 
And this is for like the, a great time to do this is when you're in bed and you may fall asleep to it, but that's okay. Um, and, or in the morning or anytime in the car, just like if you want to really benefit from connecting to her, I would suggest doing the meditation daily. But the other things you could do is first of all, just hold the intention and make it a priority, making your relationship with earth a priority and thinking about her. And when you wake up in the morning, you put your feet on the floor and you say, hi, earth, I know you're there. I care for you. It's the, it, okay, think about it this way. It's very much the same if you have a loved one who's passed over. And you talk like your mother or your father or your best friend or your partner or your child who's passed on before you. Those people, I mean, I haven't met a person who has never done this, where they talk to them, where they think about them, you know, they have emotion for them. It's the same with earth. Like you could think about earth. You could talk to earth out loud in your mind. The, just like those spirits hear those words and those thoughts, earth is the same. So you can, um, you know, until you get it to a place, well, I'm sure a lot of people that are listening to this are very uh, intuitively inclined. Um, so for those people that are really intuitive, I invite them to connect to Earth's energy and channel her and have a conversation and, and give her your, your energy. Um, but so simply by getting, you know, putting your feet on the ground and saying, I know you're there, Earth. And, and you've seen the energy, your energy going down into Earth, into her core, her crystalline core, which really exists and seeing your energy going down like a like a, a tree's roots you could see roots coming out of the bottom of your feet and going down into the center of earth where there will be a river of white light and just connecting into that and that might take two seconds i mean it doesn't take long to have that happen and then like i said just talking to her and the other thing you can do is well for one the biggest thing is talk, talk about this to other people. Yeah. Like share this message, share the message that Earth needs 7 million people to connect to her, to shift her more into balance. And that's not that much. I mean, I, there's already that many people do, that care about Earth. It's just reframing it, tweaking it just a little bit to get them to see, because I've had environmentalists come to me that have committed their entire life to helping Earth. And they've said, I didn't know I could have a conversation with her. Yeah. You know, I didn't know that she was consciousness right. and that she could heal. Well, yeah. and they're, they're, you know, it's just made their connection to her that was already, you know, profound where they've devoted their entire life even deeper. And, you know, when I talk to people that might feel more closed-minded to the idea they're actually not because they'll say oh that makes sense because you look around I mean look at the trees and fall look at the redwoods look at the ocean like they see her her spirit they see her majesty it, it's not a far fetch like right. atheists get it Right. Everyone. Well, and we have we have Lovelock's James Lovelock's Gaia Gaia theory is a totally science based version of some of what you're talking about. And then um, Stephen Harding in his book Animate Earth, also you know PhD level ecologist, talks about some of these things. So if anyone is listening and I mean, we may not have many listeners who are total skeptics here, although we may have some and, and you're welcome. But if you want to talk about these ideas with someone who might be a total skeptic, have them read Lovelock's Gaia Theory or Stephen Harding's Animate Earth, which is a, a newer, more recent discussion of it. Because they're, these two conversations are coming together. I was also thinking as you were talking in a certain ironic way, I think climate change and weather disruption 
is helping more people wake up to the fact that Earth is an organism, a living being, because we're recognizing, oh, this disruption is happening all over. Things are not isolated and separate. There's a wholeness here. And so there really is potential for us to turn the observation of our current sad scenarios really into the good. Oh, there's a wholeness here. I can connect with it we can enact repair knowing that there's a wholeness here and a a a great aliveness right and it's still there's still time not a lot but there's still time to do that repair work you know that healing work and we have to do it it has to be us it has to be humans And it's joyful, right? It is joyful. I I want to highlight that you've said that because we have a very unfortunate idea that doing the right thing is difficult and you'll have to make a sacrifice and your life will probably be worse. (laughs) We've got to outgrow that like, well, 500 years ago, we should have outgrown it, but let's outgrow it now talk uh, do you want to emphasize that a little bit more yeah. i mean you've already spoken to it but i really want people to hear this is not sacrifice no this, this is there... not making your life harder or less comfortable this is greater well-being and greater joy and health this is not heavy lifting it is not heavy lifting it's light lifting it's not even lifting it's elevating and Like I said, as a mental health clinician that's been doing this for 20 years now, I have never seen anything like this in the way of the efficacy of healing and the way that it works. And people need to give it a chance. It it is like, it's hard to put into words what it does for you what she does for you, but let me give another exercise that people can do that's very joyful to connect to earth. Wake up each day with the intention and the action of doing this is noticing that's all you have to do, five things a day, that the details of earth. Five things. So that would be looking like right now, uh, I know people aren't going to be able to see me, but I'm looking out the window. There's a branch and, you know, we're coming into winter here and there's this beautiful leaf hanging from this branch that is bright red and orange and yellow and the sun's hitting it and I'm just staring at it. And that would be one of those five details. Another one would be Like I was, as I was having my oatmeal this morning, I was staring at this flower in the vase on my table and I was noticing the details, you know, the artwork of this flower. And both these things are giving me joy. They're connecting me to earth. You know, um, another one would be noticing a person's smile that you don't know. Because we are earth, we are made up of earth. You know, we we literally are earth, right? We're made up of minerals for water. We're earth itself. That's part of the symbiotic relationship is that we have to recognize that we literally are root earth, just like every other being on this planet and that we are all interconnected. And then, so, and it might be, you know, spending five minutes with your cat or your dog and and noticing the way they're, you know, the color of their fur or the way the wind's blowing the tree branches. These, this is actually one of the um, exercises I give in my coaching and in my counseling work with clients because it elevates their depression if they're in it or if, um, it brings in gratitude and it brings in, so one of the main foundations of healing, I have, there's like five things I talk about with healing and in my coaching work is gratitude. I mean, you hear this all the time, 
gratitude is a, a up levels you right and it brings more importantly it brings you into the presence the present mode the present time to, and it make it brings in the self-awareness and when we're in the present moment which is another thing that earth does by the way is huge is i have a hard time thinking about the past it's not that i have dementia <laughs> but it's that i just don't i don't sit in melancholy i don't sit in regret i don't i mean certainly i have moments of that I don't um, sit nearly as much as I used to, like maybe a quarter now of I used to of, of, of concern about the future, you know, of, of worry. Like it keeps, her energy keeps you very present. And that's not, doing those exercises keep you present, but when you start connecting into earth, it's just a byproduct. It's not while just when you're connecting, it's in 24 seven. She keeps you much more present. And when you're present, you're not in fear unless there's, you're about to be hit by cars, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it is, her energy is, kind of what our, the cure is. We have to recognize that we have been programmed, not programmed, designed is a better word, not programmed. We have been designed to heal her. Yeah. And, and to be in connection to her. I mean, I'm thinking as you're talking that it's almost like a missing nutrient that we are designed to need. And if you think about what the folks who have studied earthing have said, you know, they point out that we all wear these rubber soled shoes now, but it used to be that everybody had leather or wooden soled shoes or they were barefoot and they were in contact with earth's electromagnetic energy all the time. And people sat on the ground and, you know, we didn't have high raised buildings. So you can make various arguments that connection to Earth's energy is actually essential to the human organism. And you know, it, you have to look a little bit now to find shoes that let you be right in contact with Earth, but we can also do that energetically. We can. And and another thing, you know, you bring up the shoes, take your I know you, this is hard to do in the snow in winter, but try to walk barefoot. I mean, it does, it does help, um, you know, try to put your fit, like if it's 20 below or 20 above and you don't feel like, you know, you can go outside, try to put your, go sit near a window and put your face in the sun. These are the, these, these things, these steps that I'm talking about that you could do every day of like noticing the pattern on a leaf or the pattern on a flower, or the way the light's hitting a tree, or the way the wind's blowing the grass, it will, you will be drawn in, is what happens. You get drawn in, and you start noticing it more. It's like when you start, you want to go out and buy a Toyota Prius, and you start seeing them everywhere. It's the same kind of thing. It's like you start noticing the beauty everywhere. When people get into gardening, you know, they pay attention to the gardens and the plants and the flowers and the yes. whole, it's, it's that you get drawn in. And just like once, as I was saying earlier, once you connect and start feeling her energy on this consistent level, you want to help her. You want to spend more time with her. Like you, the other thing it does, I mean, there's so many things that I keep, you know, remembering is that benefits us is you enjoy your own it, she promotes such deep self-acceptance and love mm -hmm. this is part of that whole detachment thing you have to go through this level of acceptance to get there so uh, she accelerates that and that that is massive um 
And then the other piece is she, her energy really helps with, what was it? Like helps you let go of materialism. Like you just don't feel like you need as much because you're not hanging out in the past. You're not hanging out in the future. You're not feel your chain's not getting yanked. You know, you're, you don't feel intimidated by people that you perceive as, I don't know, more successful or elevated or, you know, that all goes away. And you feel loved and connected, right? Totally. I mean, I even notice for myself sometimes if I'm feeling a little lonely, I'm more likely to go online and buy a book or, you know, some other little thing for myself. But that doesn't actually make us feel connected or loved. But a lot of those more shallow endeavors to meet our needs are not necessary when we're really connected to this beautiful conscious life support system that is our planet. We know we're connected. We know we have a place here. We know we have a purpose. We know we're loved. So I think that's a lot of what you're saying about not needing to be so materialistic because we have a deeper foundation with our home planet life partner. Yes, and I want to also make clear that, so I've been doing this a while and I have a very intimate relationship with her. And that I, yeah, it's quite deep and anyone can get to this level. And life still can be really hard. It doesn't take away the roller coaster ride. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't do those things, but you hell you feel held as you go through that roller coaster ride. And I will say what I've also consistently seen is so first let me say that my retention rate on people coming to the Wednesday night. So I do the where you can connect into earth with me. Because one of my things with me is I amplify her energy, right? So when you do the meditation, the group healing with me, and it's it's more than a meditation, it's we clear the density in you. And this group setting online and um, people continually come back in our retreats, 90% retention rate because it works and they feel at least at the very minimum. And these are people that consistently do it. Um, Not that show up once, I'm not talking about those people. Um, Get 50%, more like 75, 80% reduction in whatever issue they're dealing with or an 80% expansion. Like I'm trying to give some trying to give people an image, you know, to be able to relate to what kind of impact this really has on you. So yeah, I mean, you feel held, you, you always know that she's there and that love. And then also her guidance is phenomenal. I mean, she's loaded with wisdom and you can get that as well consistently whenever you need it and she'll ask you for I mean what we have called long conversations Earth and I and she asked me for my opinion and I ask her you know for hers all the time and so even though I might have a crisis as a human on earth that's still here but I have somewhere to go that I have my husband, I have my children, I have, which is, you know, uh, I'm so appreciative of her. And I have her, which is this massive abundance of love and wisdom that anyone can access. And again, I will point out, if you, and I hope you do step into this and make earth a priority, I don't see how, honestly, I don't see how people cannot make Earth or make peace a priority right now. 
I, I just, it, it blows my mind. It, it totally blows my mind that people don't do that. It, it, and a lot of it has to do with, they just don't know how, but when they do know how, I, I get people are busy, you know, but things are moving really fast. And so connected, the thing is uh, uh, that I want to say, if you step into this, you have to trust that your energy is healing her because you don't see it as much. Like, again, if you're highly intuitive, you might see how your energy is affecting her, but we don't see the bigger picture, the universal picture. So uh, there is a level of trust in this. She'll say to you, your energy is healing me. And you think, how could microscopic me, I'm a grain of sand, right? Really have that much of an impact on her. You have to go step outside and say, my, my soul is not microscopic. My soul is massive. Yeah. And you're asking your soul's energy to heal her. And it will. And also, in Earth's physical ecological systems, we are learning more and more that individual species and even maybe individual organisms are very important. So I think we can translate that scientific ecological reality to what you're talking about and say, well, based on what we're understanding, it looks like all of the physical participants in an ecosystem, the plants, the animals, the minerals are very important. Therefore, every human must be in that participatory way, very important also. Right, absolutely. It's a good point. Well, let's do it. Let's let people experience a connection with earth facilitated by you. And I'll remind our listeners now and probably again at the end, Rachel's going to be making available some audios. So just listen and enjoy this. And then there's a way to obtain some recordings of this type of experience. Yeah. And I want to talk, can I talk about that real quickly? So that's going to be in the store, right? And um, so one of them is a, video of I just did recently of a class it's not of the class but it, it's a video on how to develop your intuition but in specifically how to connect to earth because it does help I mean the ways I'm talking about like where you put your feet on the floor and you say hey earth I know you're there all that stuff helps all that stuff you really helps her if you could take the time out to learn how to step into your intuitive capability, I highly recommend it because it, it opens up your life. It opens up and it does help to enrich your relationship with earth, but not just with earth. I mean, you, once you learn how to be intuitive, you can connect to loved ones on the other side easier. You can connect to your pets. You can connect to earth. You can connect to many things. And so, but it really enriches the relationship with the earth because you're really more aware of how she's communicating with you. And you're more aware of how your body and your energetic field is picking that up. Yeah. Um, and then the other one are uh, these trans channels messages from earth about hope and connection, mm -hmm. okay? And um, so I'll make those available to you. But I, uh, doing the connecting to earth meditation, it's only 10 minutes or so. There's a period where we're, I'm silent and that's where I'm amplifying her energy and in the recordings, there's silence too for a little while. Okay. And that's, that's, your, that's the time to really say what you wanna say to her, to try to feel her energy. And some people feel it immediately. Some people it takes time. There's no right or wrong to this. Yeah, I'll add for people too, the more I've practiced this, the easier it has become. So you may have an extraordinary experience right now, your first time 
or you may have to do this at least three, five, seven times before. I think it's partly the conscious brain has to accept, oh, I, I'm connecting with earth and something's happening and it seems like it's real. So feel free to practice this a few times before you decide how well it's working for you. Yeah. So we'll begin. The first thing to do is to take three breaths and you want to breathe in for three counts, exhale for six counts in and out of the nose to engage in the parasympathetic nervous system. And this helps move whatever emotion stuck in the nervous system out so it can release. And while you're taking in these breaths, hold the intention of connecting to earth of building a relationship to her and surrendering to her healing energy. And notice the sounds and the temperature of the space you're in. Just note how your body feels, don't judge it, just note it. And you're going to just allow your body to melt down through whatever surface you're on. And it melts down through the floor and down through the surface of earth to about four feet beneath the earth's surface. We're down in her soil. And here you're going to take a deep breath. And on the exhale, you're going to feel your body expand into Earth's body. And this will signal to your body that it's safe for it to release. Because the body knows Earth. The body is brilliant. It recognizes what it's made of. It recognizes that it's safe now that it's in Earth's energy. And we're going to take one more deep breath. And on the exhale, we're going to allow ourselves to float down farther through more soil and roots. Going down, down, down. Down through denser materials through bedrock, floating down easily, down through caves, crystals, minerals, more water, more bedrock, going down, down, down. Just allowing yourself to float down, to let go of the world above you. This is your time. This is your time to connect to Earth, to be one with her. When we're moving down into the core, the crystalline core, and you'll see a river of white light, white bluish light, and just allow yourself to float down into that river of light. And this is her consciousness, her energy. And when I'm down there, this is what I say to her. And this is what I say every day. I say, I am connected to earth and Earth is connected to me. I support Earth, and Earth supports me. I heal Earth, and Earth heals me. I love Earth, and Earth loves me. We are one, we are one.
and earth is making herself known to you. You might feel sensations in your body, a tingling. If you don't feel anything at all, that doesn't mean she's not there. And you could speak to her here, you could say hello. You could say whatever you want, you could thank her. You can stay down in this river of light for as long as you want. It could be minutes, it could be hours. It's a great place to fall asleep to. It's a great place to wake up to. Earth is saying, we are in this together. I am here for you anytime at all cost. And I know you can be here for me. All you need to do is learn how to do it. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be long just a little bit every day. She says, that's all I need. It's just a little bit of your energy, of your spirit, of your love and your concern. She does not want us to bleed for her. She does not want us to grieve for her even though she understands that that's part of being human. What she needs is our energy, our love. So if you feel at a loss over her body, or you feel powerless, she says, to come to her and to connect, and this is what will heal, and this will be what makes her feel better and you feel better. And she will empower you to go back into the world and live your life being you. No more, no less. To accept the beauty of that which you are. Then you're going to allow yourself now to lift back up. We're going to go back up. Just feel yourself as though you're on a cloud being lifted, going up, up, up through the crystalline core. Moving up through the bedrock, through all the layers of time going up, up, up. Moving up now into the soil. And here, take a deep breath. And I just want you to notice how your mind feels and how your body feels right now knowing that you can do this anytime. And 
And then you're going to lift up through the soil, up through the surface of earth, up through your floor, up into your body. And you're going to take three deep breaths. And on the third breath, you're going to slowly open your eyes and notice the things around you in the room. So in the meditation that is online and that I'll be providing for you, is a little bit different. It has like roots coming out of your feet and going down into the crystalline core. Today, I took you your full body down. If you, either works and you could spend as much time as you want down there. Thank you so much, Rachel. I always notice when I do this practice that it is very powerful when you facilitate it and that I feel so integrated, that it helps me be a mind and a soul and a body. And that I think is a goal for a lot of us. It's probably the highest way for us to exist as human beings. And this is a practice that really enables us to be integrated in that way. It, it is, it's don't underestimate the power of it and the power of your you. And so with the soul piece, as you're down there connecting to earth and the river of light, ask your soul's energy to join you and to heal earth. That's all you have to do is ask it. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me how most of us know that being with other people in a compassionate and friendly and healthy way is truly healing. And now we have the scientific equipment to measure that indeed, when you are with other people in a harmonious way, you're actually running healthy, healing body chemistry this is the same thing, right? And so right. it's not hard to understand because really what you're expanding for people is what feels good with other people, you can also do with earth right. in a very powerful way. And she's available all the time. Exactly, that's it. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Rachel. It was such a delight to have your presence and your facilitation of this connection with Earth. To our listeners, you can find Rachel at vast-earth.com. And thank you so much for listening. <laughs>